Hello, everybody. Leo Laporte here, your tech guy. The case of the malicious PDF next. Ask the Tech Guy comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Whether employees are working in the office or remotely, visit LastPass.com slash Twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you by LastPass. Visit LastPass.com slash Twit. everybody uh, happy monday to you hope you're having a or had a great weekend hope you're gonna have a wonderful week a little reminder tomorrow is election day I want you all to go out and cast your vote if you haven't already uh i know it's a little scary sometimes to head out of the house but put your mask on your goggles if you need it and head out to your local polling place it is a privilege we're so lucky in this country that we get to vote uh, and it's a privilege that I want to encourage each and every one of you to take advantage of if you can. Um, I got an email from Ed. He said, Leo, this is rather strange. A guy came out to give me an estimate for a new furnace, reputable company. They just installed a new water heater. He sent me an email with a PDF of the quote for the installation. After I downloaded it, my Norton antivirus said, that a script that could enable malware had been removed from the PDF. I, I guess it was sanitizing it. My question is, was the sender maliciously responsible for placing the script on the PDF? And if if, if that's the case, I, I guess I should bring it to the company as well as him. Or could there be an innocent explanation for this? Thanks for any insight. Ed, there are a lot of explanations for this, so I'll give you the whole realm of possibilities here. I can't tell you for sure what happened but here's some of the things that could have happened first uh, explanation for those of you who don't know it's a pdf stands for portable document format it was a document format originally created by adobe but it's now kind of open and available and there are lots of pdf creation tools and pdf reading tools the advantage of a pdf it's really good for things like invoices tax returns any kind of form because you can create it and preserve the layout essentially Unlike a Word document, a word processing document, it's a picture of the document. So with anything with fields and forms and layout, it's going to look exactly like it looks on your computer, on everybody else's computer. That's the portability part. It can be taken anywhere and it will look the same. PDFs have additional format uh, or features, rather. You Sometimes there are forms that you can fill out, stamp your signature on it, things like that. But it's often used as kind of, and I think it's better to use, frankly, than, say, a Microsoft Word document for sending out things like invoices. You're pre you can be pretty sure that no matter what kind of computer, even on a phone, that your customer's using, they can read PDFs. For a long time, you had to download a PDF reader. In most cases, it was Adobe's Acrobat reader on your Windows machine to read PDFs. That's not even true anymore. Um, Microsoft's Edge browser, which is available on all modern PCs, uh, in fact, it comes with Windows 10 now, uh, can easily open read PDFs on the Macintosh Preview, which comes with every Mac, can read PDFs. Most phones can read PDFs. So this is a, a good format because almost everybody can read it. PDFs can be malicious. In fact, I'm going to talk about how a data file of any kind can be malicious. A bad guy to infect your computer, whether it's with ransomware, uh, a Trojan horse, malware, um, even just a keystroke logger, has to get you to run a program. Those are programs. You have to get you to run that program to install it and make the changes to the operating system so that it loads up every time you boot the computer up. So a lot of times what hackers are up to is to kind of tricking you into running programs. Data files in their purest form are not programs. They cannot infect you. But there is a path to infection, and there's, and I'll, I'll explain those. Uh, it, one of the reasons I don't like to use Microsoft Office documents when I'm sending attachments is because Excel, Word, um, they can contain 
scripts, macros. Most antiviruses are smart enough, and in fact, Word and Excel are smart enough to say, hey, there's a macro attached to this document. Make sure it's safe before you run it. And they, in many cases, won't run it at all. And that's because word macro viruses are a very early kind of virus and, and were a real problem. So sometimes data files can run programs. Most of the time, though, data files are benign. They're just data. You're a photo in a JPEG form or a PDF document. In theory, they shouldn't execute anything. The problem is the program that's used to run or view that data file. We call them interpreters. So Adobe Acrobat interprets PDF files. And the problem is, Acrobat's a good example, there have been numerous flaws discovered in Acrobat that allow a maliciously created PDF file to infect your computer. It takes advantage of the fact that Acrobat is a program, Reader is a program, and the PDF file can give that program instructions which it then interprets and runs and infects your computer. So in general, interpreters are potentially risky and they have to, we have to be very carefully crafted so as not to allow a data file to infect them. Similarly, a JPEG by itself is harmless, but if you had a JPEG viewing program, and this has happened as well, that had a flaw in it and the bad guys knew what that flaw was they could craft a malicious jpeg a malicious image file that by itself is harmless but when read with that particular buggy program could become malicious so it's not really the case that you can say data files are safe they're safe as long as the programs used to interpret them, to display them, are, are, are not buggy. So that's why it's always important to keep everything up to date on your computer, especially these ca this category of programs like Adobe Reader. Very important. So is it possible that you got sent a malicious PDF? Yes, it is. Is it likely? No, it's not. <laughs> and this is part of the problem I have with antiviruses. Uh, there's two problems, and we've talked about false negatives and false positives in other contexts before, but that's a problem with antivirus programs. Sometimes, often, they miss a virus. They, they, they let a virus through, a false negative, and it infects your computer even though you're running an antivirus. Sometimes, in fact, maybe even just as often, they identify something that is not malicious as malicious. In this case, I think it's probable that Norton saw the PDF, understood the potential problems with the PDF, and either told you that they fixed it or maybe they did, in fact, find something. This message that you got is interesting to me. A script that could enable malware has been removed. A PDF is, in a way, a script. Uh, what a PDF stores is programs a program that displays the page uh, the program used to be in postscript then display postscript and now it's in its own kind of format but it's actually a program so it is conceivable that a pdf when executed improperly by a program that allows it could could have a malware as i mentioned by itself though it doesn't and I'm not sure what Norton saw. It's much more likely, in, in other words, that this was a false positive, that the file was fine. It's certainly not enough evidence to get this guy in trouble. Is it possible he sent you completely innocently a malformed PDF? Absolutely. His system could be infected. Perhaps the PDF creation tool that he used to make that invoice, maybe Acrobat Distiller or some other program, Qt. PDF or, you know, there are lots of them, Foxit Pro. Maybe those programs had a bug and a bad guy got on his system and modified those programs so that they would create malicious PDFs. That's also possible. And the problem is I can't tell you exactly what happened. And this is why, I, in general, I don't recommend any viruses on personal computers, you know, as a personal thing. Um, Norton saw it, but you're running Windows 10. Did Windows Defender see it? No, right? You didn't get two warnings. Um, you might run that attachment 
it's possible it's been modified now, but if you could download another copy from your mail provider and run it through another antivirus program, there are a lot of online ones, Trend Micro, for instance, and, and get a second opinion, that might be useful. Uh, I, I often see antivirus programs falsely tag files as dangerous. I can't say for sure that something bad didn't happen, but I also can't say for sure that something bad did happen. Do you know what I'm saying? It, there's just not enough evidence. I, I think it's unlikely the chain of uh, uh, events that would lead to this happening for real and really be a threat to you are somewhat unlikely. He would have to be hacked. He would have had to create a malicious PDF, which he would have then sent to you. It was only detected by Norton, not by anything else. And then Norton says very conveniently, oh, don't worry, I removed it. All of that seems unlikely. I don't think it's, it's probably the case that you didn't get bit. And this is exactly why you've heard me say many times, I'm not crazy about antivirus programs because of the false positive, false negative aspect. They slow your computer down. Norton's notorious for that. They're very heavyweight. They can cause more problems than they solve. They can even have flaws themselves that allow bad guys to get into your system. So uh, this is an example of perhaps Norton being overcautious or identifying something wrong. But again, I can't promise you that there wasn't a malicious PDF. There's really no way to know unless you you know, got that PDF again and maybe sent it to some people or tried some other antiviruses against it. Try to get a second or third or fourth opinion if you can. If only one antivirus flags something as, as malicious, then chances are really good that's a false positive. Hey, Greg, it's a great question, and at least it gives us a chance to kind of think a little bit about how we can get infected by data files. Uh, in general, that's not because the data file itself has an infection, or has uh, it could be a maliciously crafted, but by itself it's harmless unless you've got a program, the interpreting program, that's going to take that file and turn it into something dangerous. So you probably weren't at risk anyway, presuming that you view PDFs in something that's been kept up to date. If you use Adobe Reader, that's one you really got to keep up to date. In fact, it's one I would get rid of. It had so many problems for so many years. Just use Edge. Microsoft's keeping that up to date. Or view it in Gmail's a preview or Google Docs PDF reader. Even if it's malicious, that will be safe. Uh, thanks for the question. I didn't maybe uh, cut to the chase and solve it for you, but at least I gave you some more information. Uh, and it's a good thing for us to know about, right? It's why, by the way, I always say don't send attachments. Uh, and that might be the message to give your furnace guy is, hey, I got this attachment. Whether it's true or not, Norton said it was malicious. I don't think it was. But, you know, sending email attachments is a bad idea anyway. Uh, there might be a better way you can do this, and I'm sure he can find a better way to do it. Maybe make a website, for instance, with the, with the invoice on it. Our show today brought to you by LastPass. Security is a big topic, isn't it? LastPass can help you manage identities and promote good security behaviors. At this difficult time when many employees are remote, you want your employees to have secure password storage. LastPass gives them their own vault for storing every app and web login they use. So employees always have their passwords with them and can gain access from anywhere, from any device. Rest easy knowing your business is safe. With LastPass, visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. And that's... Ask the Tech Guy for this Monday. If you've got a question for me, your Tech Guy, just email askthetechguy at twit.tv. Don't forget to vote, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Stumped on a nasty tech conundrum? Email askthetechguy at twit.tv.